career with the support project. I think one year I worked on support project, one one point five year initially of my career. Then uh, then all the time I worked in the development stuff. Okay. Uh, can you explain one of your challenging situation, technical situation you handled with well? So, uh, Ganesh, I think uh, uh, I can relate your question to the recent. Uh, let me know if my voice breaks again. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So fine. So, uh, so uh, I told you recently uh, we have migrated to AWS as well. So, in our uh, the old uh, on-premise database was in 2008 SQL version, but in AWS we were we are getting we are getting 2017 or 2017 plus versions of SQL Server. And we have almost around uh, 500 to 700 gigs of database. So that uh, that to uh, uh, that to a real-time database that we need to migrate from on-premise to uh, what do you say to AWS RDS. So uh, there was uh, two different tools provided by the AWS. One is what is it? Data migration service. Uh, uh, it's a AWS inbuilt service. What it does is so you just need to uh, uh, create some infra on AWS. And you need to connect your on-premise as a source and target as uh, as your AWS RDS. So we have tried that approach, but due to data was very huge, and we have some com uh, complex uh, data types as well, just like XML and few stuff over there. So those were not migrating well using a uh, DMS, and there were few keys that were also missing when we uh, migrated the database. So that was one challenge we found because then we tried another tool. That is AWS schema conversion tool. What it was doing was because we are also migrating from 2008 to 2017. So what it did, both of the we tried to migrate our schema with that tool, just a schema, not a data. So we tried that approach and it failed again because uh, uh, due to some keys were missing, some uh, uh, check constraints were missing all that. So so that stuck our approach. So then uh, uh, with some uh, uh, collaboration with different. Uh, AWS team as well. So uh, we found that there is one approach, uh, the technical approach that we found us there is uh, one, uh, what do you say, uh, RDS uh, restore and uh, backup is feature of AWS that has been enabled only for SQL Server, luckily. So we tried that approach and we uh, uh, we did that thing, but initial that approach was fully uh, manual stuff. We are, what we do, so we need to uh, create a backup of on premise and we need to upload that backup to S3. Then from S3, we need to uh, create one uh, RDS one that is manual steps, create one RDS and upload that backup from S3 to RDS. So S3 again uh, is it was a bit of the storage some data. Okay, so uh, we don't like this, so we uh, uh, found one approach where we automated that whole stuff uh, using our AWS knowledge uh, and tech stack. Uh, we are doing all the stuff in the single button click. So the approach that we have done was to introduce a lambda and the step function where it orchestrates the follow flow basically of suppose uh, you uh, need to download that uh, uh, AWS or the on-premise database. So we have orchestration the flow, orchestrate the flow of all the steps and then uh, initial uh, uh, after, uh, the target output was that database has been migrated uh, with one click that to a 500 gig without any issue. So those would so that all I can relate with that with your question. So that's how we achieve a few things. So how are you having the testing in your application currently? So uh, we uh, write a uh, unit test and we have a uh, team city tool so and we have Sonar Cube as well to uh, to monitor the what is it suppose if I have given some uh, new developer work and I have written suppose hundred lines of code but for unit test I have written uh, Using random I have written 20 lines of the word in unit test. So when I check in that code, so Team City will automatically trigger uh, and it will send that code coverage code to Sonar Cube. And from Sonar Cube, that email will be triggered where it will show case uh, that my new code coverage was only 20% and that will that house we are covering it, uh, the whole code coverage. Okay. Are you having the releases? So uh, releases. Uh, so we have we have uh, two ways of handling the releases. One is uh, on if, uh, for on premise. I will cover that up first. So we have a Team City uh, pipeline build up where uh, when we check in the code, we have uh, uh, three different layers. One is uh, develop reason release and master branch. So suppose we want to move some code from release one, so we uh, trigger that build from release branch and Team 
city will uh, build up uh, all the uh, releases from the uh, file downloading that that stuff from the git repository and build it and zip all those files to a folder and from team city will deploy it that uh, into an access repository where it will cover up all the and from access repository will have a no leave plans defined where we uh, trigger those plans and uh, actual deployment so what no leave will do is so no leave will uh, download that uh, that artifacts from the nexus repository nexus repository you order to your uh, ec2 you can say your uh, on premise machine and from on premise that uh, no leave will unzip that folder and so in that folder we have a exe uh, power ten scripts written where we uh, distribute uh, all artifacts supposing uh, we need to uh, copy it to some some uh, is folder so we copy that or some we need to install some uh, services so we do that stuff so those so those so that's how we are maintaining all the stuff so it's all automated stuff uh, we are not doing any manual uh, part and in aws we also uh, enter one sense chef script so instead of uh, instead of doing a uh, deployment via no leave plan what we are doing is uh, we have uh, created a chef uh, script where chef script will uh, download those artifacts from uh, from the nexus repository to the ec2 and, and it will trigger the exe power shell so we have uh, two uh, different things one is uh, exe that has been done in the c sharp so exe and, and, and this one powershell command to do the different different deployments and uh, that chef will trigger that stuff automatically through the jenkins file okay. how do you use design patterns in your code yeah we have used uh, 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 so as i told you that we have a uh, calibration services so that we do uh, manually and Uh, both nightly or weekly basis, so we have a specific uh, design pattern to implement that stuff. So we have calculated, and for I think uh, Singleton, we also use uh, trace file slow and flat file slowing as well. And observer pattern we are using in Angular to have a parent-child relationship between uh, two different components. Where we do so, those are the patterns that we commonly use in our project. Uh, have you used different uh, injection? So, uh, dependency injection. We have uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, an Unity framework that has been built. So, we have a Bootstrapper file where we register all uh, all dependencies to the to the containers. Uh, suppose uh, if, uh, I have a uh, new class, so I have uh, need to write down an interface, and I need to Unity to register it at interface and dependency class, where we can uh, have a constructor dependency as well as we can have a normal dependency. We can uh, realize. So, that's how we are using using a Bootstrapper file into uh, that. any unity container that we are using okay yeah i have one scenario i have a text file mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that uh, numbers are there mm -hmm. composited okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are some duplicate numbers as well in that mm -hmm. um i want to get the unique numbers from that file using c sharp how can we get that so what you can do is so you can uh, read that file and it has a string and then uh, this one string dot separate command is just to be convert that uh, convert that uh, string into uh, an array of characters you can write a delimiter that you want to split then you can uh, use a uh, dot distinct you can very well do that and you can uh, remove all that uh, duplicate stuff so that's what you can do so what is the difference between authentication and authorization so uh, authentication basically when you are uh, Logging to application, so you have access to application, then uh, you are clicking some uh, particular method. So you have authorized for that method, or suppose you have an admin right, or you have a general read only right. So that's the basic difference between authentication and authorization. So, so what is the purpose of using Web API? Uh, so Web API, we are uh, uh, using it to, to have a decoupled system basically, and uh, to give a proper response. And and uh, in Web API, another reason to use a Web API is to uh, To make or create a single web application for regular, so we have used that web API stuff, and and then web API if we talk about in terms of web API, we are taking that web API. So it has uh, different different browsing and everything, so that can be handled very well with using that web API. Plus, the web API has the uh, ability to create uh, a response based on the uh, request header that you want, JSON uh, or XML, so that can be handled directly without giving any extra parameters to the web API. So you can do that, or you can define a predefined rule. Plus, uh, there is one uh, one more thing. So we have uh, uh, route-based authentication in uh, Angular that that has been supported well, very well with uh, the web page. So that's why it's very useful. How you handle the errors? So we 
we have uh, a custom exception builder where we have a modified uh, in build exception builder and if any exception has been entered so we are uh, uh, so there are two steps two ways we are handling the one is uh, the JetBrick custom exception there We are doing so that by guess where we are creating custom response, uh, HTTP response, and we are sending that custom HTTP response to the UI. And from the UI, we are reading that custom response. Suppose uh, if I, uh, I told you that the bootstrapper file is there, suppose bootstrapper file is having a uh, uh, dependency on some database caching purpose is there. So when you uh, hit the service, your bootstrapper will not be able, be able to retain the object of the service. So, it will, uh, so in that case, what if we are not giving any uh, journey error to the uh, customers. But just we are handling that uh, error into try class block and we are sending a, a specific error response and we are handling that error response into uh, Angular and we are uh, giving the user friendly message to the, uh, to the user. This is one of what we are doing it. Another one is the JPEG custom exception handler uh, attribute. We are, we are applying it to class level, sort of basically control level. That will do the generic custom stuff for us to do because it blocks everything and then throw out the uh, user friendly message. So these are two ways we are doing it. Some employee may have multiple addresses also. Mm -hmm. So I want to get the employee 
students who are all having more than three records in their table. So very well, you can uh, you can uh, group by that so with the address stuff and uh, having a group count greater than three, you can very well do that with that stuff. Or greater than equal to that condition that you want. If it's multiple of three, or you want multiple four, or multiple two, you can group by that and have using a having clause, you can do that. Yes. So how many members are in the game? Two junior developers. Okay. 